guys. Car chat. <laughs> All right, so this is something that's been coming up so much lately in my conversations with my clients um, and my in our group Zoom calls. I've kind of seen messages from other coaches. This has been coming up for them too, so I'm like, it's trickling around in the universe. People need this message. Um, so I thought I'd share. So enoughness, not enoughness. So for so long, all of us, all of us, don't try to act like you're exempt. All of us have been using not enoughness as a driver, right? Like not good enough as that. My body isn't good enough. I don't have enough money. I'm not a good enough parent. Like whatever it is, we're like in this chronic not enoughness and we're just like pushing ourselves down and expecting ourselves to go up. It makes no freaking sense. And I've been talking about this with my clients for a while and sometimes it challenges them. Sometimes they're like, I'm like, you have to give it to yourself first. You have to see that you already have everything that it takes. That you are already awesome where you're at and I can see the discomfort. I can see the like, "Mm mm-mm. Because if I give myself that, then I'll stop trying and I'll become this big giant fat piece of lard that sits around and watches TV all day and eats ice cream, right? That's what we think is gonna happen if we're freaking nice to ourselves and empower ourselves. And I just wanna share a quick message today and say that it is the opposite. That is not what freaking happens. The opposite happens. When you see that you, for yourself, that you are freaking powerful, that you're a creator, that you can do anything, it drives you even more. And the cool thing about it is that while you're driving towards your goals, you're happy. And that's it, you're empowered and you're happy and you know you got it because you keep empowering yourself instead of doing this thing where it's like freaking A, okay, it was pretty good, but like not even close, I got so far to go. And how many people, like, I mean, God, if I had a dollar for every single person who has said to me, like, man, I wish I had realized, like, how good I looked back, you know, five years ago or whatever. I thought I was fat and blah, 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 blah. And it's not just with the body. We do this with everything. It's like every single area of our lives. We're sitting there, like, pushing ourselves down. And so um, I'll share with you some ways that I have kind of used this little hack I'm telling you, like every single thing, I know so many of you experience this and you know what I'm talking about, but every single thing that I've achieved in my life, it's because I was in an empowered energy in which I knew I had it. I'm like, watch me. (laughs) I don't even care if anybody understands or believes in me or whatever. Like I know what I'm doing and I know I got this. That's how I changed my body. That's how I built my business. That's how I changed my relationships, changed my parenting. It's just like, Staying in that empowered energy in which you are your own coach, you are your own cheerleader, and you're like rooting yourself on, you just, you skyrocket. And like, you've probably heard the saying, like, every single thing in our lives is a result of the way that we think. All right, I picked that up somewhere, and it's so true. So if you're sitting there thinking, like, I'm never going to make it, I don't know, and you're like, we do this like humility thing, it's like valued in our society be really humble and somehow humility has been confused with like self-abuse and like belittling and like it's like socially it makes you socially acceptable if you criticize yourself or put yourself down in front of people and it's not worth it because you inside of you I like to say your child self your child self hears that and they're like okay she doesn't freaking believe in me he doesn't believe in me and so we play small because we have no freaking support. And um, I see that, I see a lot, you guys probably notice it too on social media, you'll notice people are like validation seeking or maybe in real life, they're validation seeking. They're like, tell me I'm awesome. Tell me I'm lovable. Tell me I'm pretty. Tell me I'm handsome. <laughs> you know, tell me you see how successful I am. <laughs> if, you're, if you've ever perused Bumble as a woman, you can see that all over the place. It's like, nice car, next. You know, it's like, I can, you can just see through it. It's like, dude. You don't need to show off your car. You don't need to show off your house. Like, I can value you as a human, you know, but we go around and we look for validation like this all the time, but we can just give it to ourselves. And then we don't have to be using people all over the place for it. (laughs) It puts us in a bad way too, because like, if you need it bad enough, you'll take it anywhere you can get it. You'll take it from anybody who'll give it to you. Oh, that's not, that's not a great place to be. Explain the difference between narcissism and self-deprecating. You know what? As I like, I love this question, Kim. Thank you. Um, as I was building self-esteem and building self-confidence, 
I had to go through that. I was like, am I like freaking narcissistic because I like myself, you know? <laughs> am I like a narcissist because I like have high self-esteem and I started reading about it and I was like, okay, I'm definitely not like that. I definitely don't like use people and <laughs> manipulate people and all that. But it's crazy because society has taught us that like saying something nice about ourselves is narcissistic. Seeing the good in ourselves is narcissistic. And you know what's funny is um, I've actually studied narcissism quite a bit because I definitely was in a relationship with a full tilt narcissist. I'm not saying like he was just like conceited and thought highly of himself. I'm talking like crazy ass levels of manipulation and psychoticness. And so as I've looked deeper into it, narcissism is really rooted in really, really, really deep levels of low self-esteem that causes someone to overreact. It's also like, a, it is like a legitimate mental health condition, but um, it's really rooted in, in low self-esteem, right? So when we start becoming nice to ourselves, that can be very uncomfortable because we've been trained not to. We've been trained that it's like, it makes you like a self-aware person if you're like, oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> why? Why, why, is that, why does that make us like self-aware? No, it just makes us mean to ourselves. And everybody else is like, yeah, because they're mean to themselves too. But how about like we change the conversation? How about we lead and we show, you know, you guys will see sometimes in my, in my posts, I'll say something nice about myself because I'm trying to set that example. And also because it's nice to me. It's nice to my inner child self. Like, can you call yourself beautiful? Can you call yourself powerful? Can you call yourself successful? Right? It's so freaking bizarre. It's like people who run marathons are like, well, I'm not a runner. Okay, I mean, that's fine. You don't get your identity attached to it, but like you are a runner, you're running. <laughs> but it's like somehow they think that's like egoic if they like have any sort of like even a hint of something that's good about them. <laughs> so um, the reason I share this is because like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, YOLO, I got one shot at this life, right? No matter what you believe, even if you believe in multiple lives, like you only got one for this one. Like, let's make it freaking awesome. And you can't when you're constantly sitting there and telling yourself that you're not a, good enough. At all sorts of things. I lived that life for way too long. That life sucks. I lived that life in which I would like guilt myself and cry myself to sleep at night because I like didn't play Barbies with Kenzie long enough or <laughs> like should have blah, blah, blah. should have made somebody dinner at church who suffered. You know what I mean? I just would like sit, sit there and be like, self-abuse, 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 pound myself down, guilt myself, shame myself. And that life sucks. I didn't achieve a whole lot in that time of my life. And I didn't feel a lot of happiness because the deep unconscious stories were, you're not enough. You're not doing a great job. You're kind of a sucky person. How sad is that? I woke up to how I was really thinking about myself and it's the work of Byron Katie. So if you haven't looked into that, it's a really, really powerful way to start examining the stories that you have inside. And I'll tell you if there's like people you're resentful towards in your life and all that, it's really coming down to how you show up for yourself. not really them because guess what when you have self-love you don't tolerate that crap <laughs> you get those people out of your life or you set a boundary you know so it all it's all rooted in us and how what we give to ourselves now with the body man what a freaking complicated relationship we have with our bodies I think I mean if I'm real like I don't I hardly know anybody who is like happy with their body and it doesn't matter where they're at they can be the fittest person you've ever seen or like totally out of shape, just the full spectrum. Not enough, not enough, not enough is the constant message. And 
the way I see to get out of that is to start seeing the beauty of what your body does and giving it credit. So it's like, dude, I have hands. If you have hands, that's freaking awesome. They're pretty helpful, huh? Um, you know, if you have eyes, if you have a freaking digestive system, you have legs that take you where you want to go. If you don't have legs, maybe you have arms, you know, you at least got a freaking heart that's beating. I know that and a brain that's working and you start to like have gratitude for the body. It's really hard to start being mean to it when you have gratitude for it every day. Right. So like, that's where like, for me, that's where enoughness started with the body is when I started to learn about it. And I was like, holy shit, this thing is freaking amazing. Like auto heals itself. And like, runs for like a hundred years we don't even understand how it works like I bow down respect you know so anyway um when you start seeing your enough this is like the this is the tricky part it's like everyone's afraid to do that there there's so much fear around giving yourself credit that now you'll become an underperformer now you'll just be a lazy piece of crap it is I'm telling you just try it like you like put your hand on your heart sometimes, you know, and like maybe just driving or maybe you do meditate. Maybe you can start meditating and just be like, you're freaking beautiful. You know, like, mm, good job. I see you on this. I see you on that. Mine started with, um, I started like muttering to under my breath, like good job, girlfriend. And that's like a thing that my clients and hire like joke about now. Cause I say it all the time, but so I started, it's just like, i crushed a workout. I was like, dude, good job girlfriend that was freaking awesome you know you do something awesome in your business or in your family it's like dude good job you know and start being nice to yourself it makes you want more of that we like rewards we still like our little gold star sticker charts and when you start giving yourself those little gold stars you want more of them what do little kids do they're like can I pick up any trash off the floor <laughs> to their teacher because they want another one so it's the opposite we don't just stop performing when we give ourselves that little metaphorical gold star we want more of them and we have the empowerment to do it from a place of beauty and creation instead of striving and not enoughness and I'll just get whatever I can take and all this like low vibe energy it's so beneath us you know so I don't know I just felt compelled to share that today is like it's so needed right now I mean, I think like being a combo of working with people one-on-one -on -one and getting really, really deep into their mindsets and, and also getting feedback from you guys on social media. Like I get a lot of feedback on like what's going on with people all the time, you know, and this is a definite huge problem that I see is just being so freaking mean to ourselves. And you know what? One thing that Katherine Dixon did, like in one of my first sessions with her that like made a massive impact on me was like we went into some story where I was being hard on myself and we all the you know what does that mean about you it's like oh I'm I'm a mess I'm a loser blah, 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 all these things you know and then she's like would you ever say that to anybody else and I'm like oh my gosh no and she's like yes you would and I was like <laughs> excuse me and she's like if you got comfortable and pushed your limits enough you would and I thought about like the times with my kids that I like lose my crap and I'm like, why, you know, it all comes out. Same freaking self-talk. If you have that in you towards yourself, it will come out probably to those closest to you, which sucks, you know? So it's like when we build our relationship with ourselves, we build it with everybody else too, you know? So it's just like, it's such a worthwhile thing to do and it brings so much happiness. Um, this is how I live. Like, does it look like I'm not driving towards goals? <laughs> you know, I love it. But it's like in an empowered energy where I'm like, you got it. Um, one of my clients was out visiting me. and <laughs> We were running next to each other on the treadmill. She's like, I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> you're running Tourette's. Because I, I call it running Tourette's. I'm sorry. I know it's really offensive. But <laughs> if you have Tourette's. But I don't know what else to call it. Like these things just like fly out of my mouth. Like out of control. Over many years of running outside alone. And it's just like, come on. You got it. Let's go. Good job. You know, it's just like this little like self-empowerment. It makes me perform so so much better what if it like what if before I got on this live I was like oh my gosh you can't do this you're gonna suck it's gonna be so bad like it would be <laughs> but I'm like dude I just got something to share let's go you know you got like that giving yourself credit and empowering yourself makes you perform better always you know so just trying to spread a little sunshine today like give yourself credit for one thing today something you know 
Um, I have a higher planner that I do with my clients and we do like an evening routine. And one of the questions is like, what's something that went well today? And it's like, it's sad that we have to like have an exercise in which we <laughs> give ourselves that, but it's kind of necessary because we weren't trained that way. We weren't raised to be nice to ourselves, you know? So pick something that you're doing a good job on and be like, like freaking say it, like look at yourself in the mirror and be like, dude, you're doing a good job with whatever and start changing that self-talk I love the acronym killing ants I think it's from Dr. Joel Amen, if I'm not mistaken he runs like one of the most prestigious brain clinics in the world but um it's a uh, automatic negative thoughts so as soon as those things start coming in where you're like being hard on yourself and you and you realize it because most of the time you won't realize it because you've been doing it for like decades kill it squash it so it's like you know, whatever you're guilty or shaming yourself about, mm, 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 mm. compassion, and like that's okay. You're you're doing a good job. You're learning. You're growing. Just try better next time. It's all good. You know, like being nice to yourself, like you would to like your best friend. So that's all. Just watch what happens in your life when you start doing that regularly. It's freaking bananas. You, it's not only you start achieving higher, but you're happy the whole time. And you like being alone. Like, this is something I was telling my clients, uh, I think last week. Like, if you don't like being alone with yourself, it's probably a good sign that you're not very nice to yourself. Like, if you're telling yourself these, like, mean, self-deprecating thoughts all the time, I wouldn't want to be alone with me either. Because I'm mean to me. <laughs> right? It's like a little kid. Like, they're send them to some super mean babysitter that's yelling at them and criticizing them all the time. They're not going to want to go over there. And that's, not, that's how it is with ourselves. So if you have a hard time being alone with your own thoughts, <laughs> like sitting alone in your room makes you want to freaking like run, it's probably because you're not very nice to yourself. So start killing those ants, killing those automatic negative thoughts. Just see what happens, you know, and replace it. Don't just kill it. Replace it with some kindness or some gratitude so powerful I'm reading your guys comments like a little bit as I can <laughs> while I'm driving all right I've got a question why is it that we have so much yeah compassion for our other people but aren't able to do it to ourselves I know it just takes practice we're not trained in it so it's like we literally have to train ourselves to think that way and I do you know like you guys see I like mess up all the time on podcasts or on my stories I write the wrong thing and it's crazy what's happened over the years because it used to be like, oh, like I was like embarrassed. Now I just laugh, you know, like it's just like I would with a friend, like just like a giggle. Um, a really good book on this is Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff, she's a PhD researcher on compassion. That book is like, especially if you're like a coach or especially if you're like a life coach or mindset coach. Oh my gosh, that book is so helpful. Therapists as well. But yeah, like practice that. Um, an exercise I like to do with my clients that's really powerful is like, I'll ask them like, what's a recent time that you felt guilty about something? You know, and like write as many adjectives that you thought about yourself as possible when you did that thing. And then we'll do other ones like write about a time that you um, uh, were disappointed in something you didn't do that you wanted to do. What does that mean about you? Adjectives, right? And we do a whole bunch of different ones. And then I have them pretend they they pick the person that they think is like the most sweet, wonderful, amazing person in the world, like maybe their best friend or their kid or something. And I'm like, now you're going to say that to them. So imagine they did that same thing. Say it. Okay. When was the last time they felt rejected, right? What does that mean about me? I'm a loser. Nobody likes me. Um, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm annoying to people. So then you imagine like your kid feeling rejected and you're like, yeah, you're a loser. Nobody likes you. <laughs> you annoy everybody. It's me so mean. That's so abusive. <laughs> it's so mean. But we do that to ourselves. So it's like starting to catch those things and flipping them into like, dude, no, you're not. That is not freaking true. But you're just, it's just, it's habits. It's like mental and emotional habits. So we have to learn to train new ones into ourselves. And I, I firmly believe 100% that this is why there's so much depression and unhappiness in the world is because we're so freaking mean to ourselves. We're just squashing ourselves down all the time. It's got to stop. And it starts with us. It starts inside of us. That's why my higher logo is the way it is. It's an eagle coming out of the mountain. The eagle flies the highest of all the birds. It's got shamanic and, you know, spiritual symbolism as being, like, connected to the divine. 
and we we get there I'm trying to get that point across that that starts inside of us we don't climb and strive for that we have to go inside and give that to ourselves and do the healing work remove the blocks you know so much of us have so much shit from childhood and our teenage years so we were just like punish 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 it's so bad so you heal that you remove the blocks and you just start being freaking nice to yourself and having compassion and ma'am like watch out because you become limitless you're like oh you always have someone on your team and that's you you know and like for me like I always feel like I have the divine on my side too that makes you feel real limitless and that to me comes from meditation and being out in nature walking in silence and just like letting it in sometimes nothing comes in just freaking peace but sometimes some really cool messages come in and when I get that inspiration, then when I go to like share that or build that, I'm like, dude, I got this message from like a divine source. So <laughs> I know I'm limitless. I know I have help. Plus I'm cheering myself along all the way. It's like, it's so good. So good. I'm so, I'm glad. I'm so grateful that all the paths I've been down in my life have led me to that space, you know, cause it brings so much happiness, but it starts inside. It starts in, you know, healing changing the old stories that's why I love the work of Byron Katie so much and then practicing you know I did positive affirmations in the mirror for probably like six months as part of my morning routine I don't do that as part of my morning routine anymore but it was powerful because sometimes I would say stuff to myself and I would like tear up so I knew that there was shit there you know I knew that I didn't believe that about myself and I was like that sucks you don't believe that about yourself what's going on there you know and then that was an alert to like start working on that so yeah that's all just thought i'd share that hopefully that's helpful to you guys thank you for popping on appreciate you guys all so much all the support all your insights like i see you guys too i really appreciate it when you share your your wisdom and your experiences like in comments because then other people can see that and especially when you're vulnerable it like helps other people be like oh i'm not alone like other people feel like that too okay cool you know and that promotes so much healing so appreciate you all all right have a great day, guys. Bye.